So, what's the deal with this movie? Where'd it come from? Rock and Roll was an animated rock epic produced by some animation studio in Canada. Ah, yes, Nelvana. They've been on my show before. They made that hit or miss Madballs cartoon and that dreadful never ending story series. They also produced a bunch of other weird projects, mostly for holidays. But this was one of their first feature length films, and it was backed by music and vocals from famous artists like Iggy Pop, Debbie Harry of Blondie, Lou Reed of Velvet Underground, Cheap Trick, and even Earth, Wind, and Fire. Wow, okay, now I'm curious, so let's take a look. The movie opens with some exposition about that future war that's supposed to wipe out humanity. Yeah, you know the one. But somehow it doesn't kill off a few specific animals who evolve and inherit the Earth. In other words, all the characters look like this. We cut to a dive bar where a guitarist named Omar and his girlfriend Angel are about to perform, or rather Cheap Trick is about to perform. But I guess the club owner isn't a fan of Cheap Trick and pulls the plug on them. Omar gently negotiates with him and they get to play again. But this time Angel, or rather Debbie Harry, grabs the mic and sings her song. Omar, feeling a little emasculated that his girlfriend's song is better than his, storms off the stage. But Angel's song catches the attention of a shadowy figure in the back known only as Mock. We'll see him again in a bit. Oh boy will we see him. After the performance, Omar goes to apologize to Angel. Then we cut to make out point where they're having a quick in and out. Oh, uh, so Cockblock here delivers an invitation from Mock. Won't you come up for a spell? Cute. Forget it. Come on, oh, he wants to talk to us. It could be good fun. Suddenly, Omar is convinced, and the next day they all go to see Mock, where they're greeted by the Beagle Boys on roller skates. Mock! Great to see ya! You tell him I was Mark. No! Then why does he keep calling me Mark? Are you calling me a liar? No, but he keeps calling me Mark. You are calling me a liar. Are you? Ah! you are so. Yeah, these are the henchmen. Then Mock makes his big entrance. <laughs> Anyone want a beer? <laughs> okay, I instantly love this guy. What did you think of my last album? I loved it. I bought it too. My gerbil uses it for a room divider. <laughs> Sorry, I like to do that sometimes. Then Mock offers them... I want to say a drug, but it's not a drug, it's, it's like a ball, but it somehow gets them high, I think. Well, while they're distracted, Mock and Angel go off somewhere. My last concert was not completely sold out. So, it was still great, I was there. Don't talk to me, Angel. I'll show them power. I can do it. With you. Angel. Angel. Yeah, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is Mock is crazy. <laughs> okay, duh, but let me elaborate. So apparently Mock used to be the greatest musician in this world, but went mad with fame and power. He started dabbling in dark arts, and now he wants to summon a demon for some reason. But in order to do that, he needs a specific singing voice, and Angel just happens to have that voice. Accept my offer. No, Mark. I couldn't leave them for anything. 
But after she refuses his generous offer, he does this, which knocks her out. The Beagle Boys get rid of the others, and they fly away in their limp fortress. Yeah, not surprised a guy like this has one of those. Oh no! Uh, stretch! Stretch! Wake up, Stretch! I, I can't drive this car! Alright, where are the keys? Where are the keys? Dog, dog! What? There's regular dogs in this world? How's that possible? It said in the beginning that dogs were one of the animals that survived the war and evolved. So what's up with the regular dog? Is that like what monkeys are to humans? Anyway, they crash and Dizzy, the short fat one, explains that they're headed for Nuke York. Yes, Nuke York. Then they steal a cop car and head off. And no one goes after them. Okay. Well, at least they got some rock and traveling music. <laughs> Meanwhile, at Mock's place, Angel gets some help escaping from the Beagle Boy's sister, Cindy. They climb through the vent and die! Oh, I did not need to see that. Anyway, as they escape, Angel overhears Mock's plan and... <laughs> wow. <laughs> Our villain, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and look, his AI interface is a pentagram. Man, this movie isn't subtle at all, is it? A being can be sent back by the magic of one voice, one heart, one song. Magic? Magic, magic, one voice, one heart, one song, gibberish garbage! I demand more scenery to chew! The being can be sent I back know, by the magic. I know, one voice, one heart, one song, but who is it? Gee, I wonder who that might be. Anyway, the girls end up at Club 666. Yeah, again, no subtlety. And this scene features a tune from Earth, Wind, and Fire. The guys are there as well and try to follow Angel. Slim and Dizzy are caught by the Beagle Boys, but Omar runs after Angel. Omar! What a pleasant and unexpected surprise. Hi, Big O. How's it going? Perhaps we should invite Omar up for a spell. <laughs> <laughs> Was he just now voiced by Tommy Wiseau? Everybody betrayed me. I fed up with this world. But it turns out it was a ruse planned by Mock and the Crypt Keeper, apparently. I'm best suited for a male role. But I prefer playing a ghoul! <laughs> and what have you done to the guys? I offer you fame, riches, and a crack at the top you refuse. I accept that. Good. But Where's then Omar? a chance to work with me, mock. And you say, no, thank you. This makes mock sad. So try to realize that I must be firm when I say to you, dear angel, sing, or they fry! What are you doing to them? Oh my god, he's... he's... um... I'm not really sure what he's doing to them. You're, you're totally crazy! And the last horse crosses the finish line. So apparently whatever Mock did to them made them stupid, and Mock has them shipped off to their hometown. Okay, the next scene is a little confusing. Apparently Mock tried to summon the demon, but failed and ended up destroying Carnage E. Hall. I gotta admit, I kinda like that one. So what we get is a brief and strange montage followed by a grainy news report. I don't know why they did that. Why couldn't they just show it happening? Come to think of it, what's the point of all this? Why is Mock going through all this trouble to summon a demon that he probably wouldn't be able to control in the first place? 
Seriously, what is this guy's deal? He is mocked. That is all you need to know, man. But, like, what's his motivation? Why is he so crazy? Oh, don't worry. His big musical number is coming up, and it explains everything. My name is Mark Banks and Bob. I know you love the pain you got. You've never seen the likes of me. Why, I'm the biggest thing since World War III, girl. Yeah, of course. That explains everything. After the sudden music video, we see one of the Beagle Boys named Zip watching TV. Hello, boys and girls. Hello, Uncle Mikey. Can you tell the difference between good and evil? Is this man being good to the passage? Good or evil? Is this what children's programming in Canada is like? Hey, boss. Um, can 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 you tell the difference between good and evil? Zip, try to realize there is no longer black or white, good or evil. We've evolved beyond uh, that. But Uncle Mikey says we should we know the difference. We all must have our own personal view of right and wrong. But, but, but is what we are doing evil? Of course not. We're only trying to summon a demon from hell. What's so evil about that? You'll never see that demon! I'm the one with the voice, and I'm not going to sing! Shut up! And without me, Shut you're up. nothing! You're Shut a up. fraud, Mark! Shut I up! What? <laughs> no hocus pocus! You will see! Um, okay, I guess this part was too violent to show. Oh, good! I would have been motherfucking offended by all this violence! <laughs> she can sing or she can scream! <laughs> but she still pissed me off. T women, am I right, fellas? So we see the rest of the band have come to their senses and try to go rescue Angel as Mock tries to summon the demon again. And the crowd gets treated to the greatest metal concert ever! Omar tries to fight the demon, but Zip steps in and takes one for the team. Ah, Zip! What did you do it for? For Uncle Mikey and us. <laughs> Toad, we ain't evil, are we? Don't talk now, Zip. Oh, Zip. Talk to me! you know where this is going. What will the signal be for your eyes to see me? So I still will send the state, send my thoughts to Yeah. 
He's weakening, but we need some help. Everybody, join in! that the day is saved. Love and music triumph. When will evil learn, etc. Well, this was an interesting film. First, I should mention that this movie was originally supposed to be for kids with none of the adult themes. It spent a long time in development, going through a lot of changes, and sadly, you can tell. There's some sloppy editing, some narrative problems, and a few sound mixing errors. But I have to give it credit, the animation was very lively and natural looking, the music was awesome, the atmosphere was great, everything looked dark and dystopian, and of course, Mach was a riot. Thank you. And there was some really trippy visuals. I've always been a big fan of those old animation lighting effects. Overall, I'd say this is one you can probably check out. Well, this one's done. Now can I finish the Obscurathon without any more interruptions? Lisa, do you have anything you'd like to add? I do not care. Good. Well, the Obscurathon is about to come to an end, and... I've saved the worst for last. A movie so bad and so obscure that it was never released. Get some wasted beyond belief. Yeah, mama.